Hello beautiful people, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here to play a bit of Spot the Difference with you. On my left here we've got the LG G7 ThinkQ and on the right we have a nice bit of OnePlus 6 action. As you can see, first glance they are basically the same phone but there's actually quite a lot of difference in terms of the specs, the general features and all the rest. So we're going to go through them side by side now to see which one might be best for you. And don't forget to give us a subscribe for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Thanks everyone. From the front, they do basically look very, very similar, helped along in no small part by the fact that they've got this notch style effect. The screen basically stretches to fill that entire front panel, and of course you've got these pleasingly curved corners on both displays as well. Over the LG G7 is slightly smaller than the OnePlus 6, uh, believe it or not. It's a 6.1 inch display compared with the 6.28 inch on the OnePlus, and it's actually a little bit narrower as well. It sports a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio compared with the 19 by 9 on the OnePlus 6. Now, of course, flip them over and you'll see that they both obviously sport a glass design. They both have a lovely glossy finish to them, both quite rugged as well in our testing so far. They both seem quite resistant to scratches and scuffs, especially the good old OnePlus 6. That Gorilla Glass finish means that it, uh, it doesn't pick up any kind of scratches or scuffs, even with plenty of abuse. You do, of course, get a dual lens camera in both cases. We'll discuss the camera tech in depth later. Uh, and it's nicely centrally positioned for a nice symmetrical finish to it all. And then beneath both camera grills, we've also got a nice bit of fingerprint sensor action as well. In both cases, nice and nippy, but the OnePlus 6 is definitely nippier. So I'll just give them a quick tap simultaneously now. And as you can see, the OnePlus is basically the millisecond you tap pretty much, you're straight into it, slight delay on the G7. Both of these phones are water resistant, but only the G7 actually has the IP rated, it's IP68. The OnePlus can be submerged as well, although it doesn't have that official rating, although I'm too terrified to do so, to be perfectly honest with you. But it can certainly survive a rainstorm, absolutely no problem whatsoever. And if we just have a quick tour of the rest of the design as well, you'll notice that they both rock a Type-C USB port down here at the bottom. They've both got the speaker grill and they both have a 3.5mm headphone jack as well, so you don't need to meddle around with any adapters or anything. Both of these phones also boast a unique button. In the case of the LG G7, it's the Google Assistant button mounted here on the side. A quick push of that will get you straight into that Google Assistant. Instead of all that, the OnePlus has its very own alert slider instead, and what that does basically just allows you to slide up to the middle and down below, and it just changes the profile. Uh, so it's really handy if you're about to jump into a meeting, you just stick it on silent or vibrate, and then just remember to flip it back down to full ring uh, when you get out of the meeting again. So the OnePlus has the slightly more spacious display, and it's also a completely different screen tech as well. You get an IPS screen here on the LG G7, it's an AMOLED here on the OnePlus, and certainly to my eye, colour seems slightly more punchy here on the OnePlus. If you dive on in there, you'll see that the G7 is actually pretty punchy, but uh, slightly more vibrant in your face visuals here on the OnePlus. Of course, you can completely toggle that to uh, suit your own particular needs. If you don't want those really, really punchy visuals, just dive into the display section. And then you can head to screen calibration, and as you can see, you've got the likes of sRGB, other color, color gamuts that you can use instead. And the LG, not to be outdone, also has tons of customization that you can dive into right there as well. So for instance, dive into the screen color, and you can dive between a few different settings here, cinema, sports, game, expert, or just manually fiddle around with the color temperature and indeed the RGB levels. Long and short of it is they both basically sport very, very gorgeous displays. They're fully customizable, and whenever you're rock watching uh, some movies, checking out your photo gallery, something like that, it will all really, really shine off the screen. Of course, it's worth pointing out as well that the LG G7 does actually have a Quad HD Plus display, so that means it's a 3120 by 1440 resolution in this case because of that elongated aspect ratio. In the case of the OnePlus, it's uh, sadly just a Full HD Plus, so it's 2280 by 1080. It's not quite as crisp, but stick pictures side by side and you'll really struggle to notice any difference in terms of detail levels and all the rest. Things look just as sharp here on the OnePlus, you'll really struggle to notice any kind of difference. Of course that notch does intrude a little bit on the screen when you're in your desktops and stuff though for apps it's generally blanked out. If you don't like that notch effect you can fully toggle that off as well. So for instance, dive into new second screen here on the LG G7 and you can see you can either have it standard, custom, you can completely blank it out if so required just to remove that effect. I like the rainbow effect, I think that's quite snazzy. And ditto on the OnePlus, just dive into the display settings and you can once again get that all hidden from view on your desktops. Before I forget to mention it, the LG G7 also supports HDR10 content, so uh, any download and streaming services that support HDR10, you'll be able to enjoy those just slightly boosted contrast levels. It does make a small difference. 
And also, while the OnePlus 6's panel is supremely powerful, uh, you'll have absolutely no problem seeing this thing in bright daylight. That's it on maximum levels there, and the camera is sort of <laughs> overpowered by the brightness. The LG G7 is actually even brighter. If you bump that brightness all the way up to the top, I think it's about 500 nits, and then you've got the uh, screen boost feature as well, which then boosted to a mighty 1,000 nits, which frankly will melt your eyeballs. Uh, so yeah, if you want something to use outdoors a lot, either of these will do fine. In both cases, it is of course a bit of Android Oreo running the show, but you do get an overlay stuck on top of it, just adding a whole host of bonus features. So for instance, on the OnePlus, you've got the likes of the shelf shortcuts, which just allows you quick access to your favorite contacts and all the rest of it. Dive into the settings, you've got tons of stuff here as well. You can completely customize those buttons at the bottom of the screen. You can remove them entirely, replace them with gestures, or you can uh, assign extra shortcuts to them. Uh, if you dive into the gestures section, you've got lots of gesture support in there as well. Lots of handy little shortcuts, which are always good to see. In addition to that, diving to advanced, you've got a gaming mode, which is quite handy if you do a lot of gaming. It basically can block your notifications. It can give you a little bit of a network boost when you're playing the likes of PUBG, which is definitely appreciated. One of the best additions that we like the most is the face unlock feature, which is fantastic. It works really, really well, even in really dark conditions, and it's an ideal alternative to the fingerprint sensor. We actually use it more than the fingerprint sensor now because it's so good and so fast. The LG G7, of course, LG loves sticking loads of extra features into its handsets. The settings menu is actually split into four different sections. There's so much stuff going on and it would be absolutely impossible for me to dive into all of it right here, right now. But we'll go through some of the main stuff. So for instance, uh, in terms of the sound quality stuff, it's DTS supported, so you can have a play around with that when you've got some headphones connected, uh, change the, uh, dive into the equalizer, change the bass levels, all that kind of stuff, get it just the way you like. You also get this nifty one-handed mode on the LG G7, which just minimizes the desktops down towards the bottom of the screen. You can move it about, you can open up your apps. It just makes it that much easier to use with one mate. You can even drag down the notifications bar and do everything that little bit easier. Unfortunately, the OnePlus does not sport a mini view as such. Uh, you can drag down the notifications bar from anywhere on screen, which is quite handy. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't minimize your apps and everything. So you are stuck sort of struggling to use it one handed. And of course, there is plenty more packed into the G7. Smart Doctor, just basically resource management. You do get a gaming mode on there as well, which does a very similar thing to the OnePlus and tons more on top. I'm going to do a full tips and tricks guide to the LG G7. I've already done one for the OnePlus 6 over on Recombu, so go check that out if you want to deep dive into all of the special features and some of the best new bits. Running the show in both cases, it's a Snapdragon 845, and of course, it is an absolute beaut. Uh, you get really, really impressive results. If you're a bit of a fan of Benchmark, and we ran a bit of Geekbench on it, and unsurprisingly, the scores were very similar. Uh, you get a choice of either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM here in the LG G7. This is the 4 gig model. We've got a 6 gig model of the OnePlus 6, and you can also pick that up with up to 8 gigs of RAM, which is just frankly ludicrous. Uh, but as you can see, the, uh, the extra RAM boost does seem to help the OnePlus uh, with the, uh, the multi-core score, as you might expect. And in both cases, uh, PUBG loads up nice and swiftly and you can play with the maximum detail settings with a lovely smooth frame rate and absolutely no problem blasting people's faces off from many, many miles away. It was great fun. As for the storage, you again get a choice. You can either get 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage space. Uh, I've got 64 gig G7 here, 128 gig OnePlus 6. But of course, you can slip a micro SD memory card of up to 400 gigs here into the LG G7, whereas the OnePlus 6, there is no micro SD memory card support at all. Boo. When it comes to the battery tech, we're actually slightly more impressed by the OnePlus. That 3,300 milliamp cell keeps you going easily a full day. I usually have about 20% battery life left at the end of a full-on intensive day. And then a bit of dash charge gets you charged up almost to full in just an hour. It really is great stuff. Unfortunately, the LG G7 is not quite as strong. It's a 3000 milliamp cell. At the moment, it seems to last about a day uh, on a full charge. Uh, but of course, I'll continue testing this because I've only been using this for a couple of days. So stay tuned for an update on that. Uh, you do get a bit of wireless charging with the G7 if that's your bag. You don't get that on the OnePlus despite that glass backing. Probably a cost-saving exercise. But that dash charge is really, really superb anyway. So what about the camera tech? Well, of course, as I mentioned briefly before, you do get a dual lens snapper in both of these cases. Uh, although it is quite different technology, you get a dual 16 and 16 megapixel effort here on the LG G7. Uh, that primary 16 megapixel lens is used more often than not. And then you can swap manually to the second 16 megapixel lens, which is actually a wide angle uh, with 170 degree uh, view. 
So that's quite handy whenever you're shooting a vista or a group shot, for instance. And uh, the primary lens is an f1.6, a very strong in low light we've noticed so far, whereas the secondary is an f1.9. And in terms of the OnePlus 6, it's a 16 megapixel primary lens and a 20 megapixel secondary lens. They're both f1.7, so again, the low light performance is quite strong. And you do get a bit of OIS built into there as well. But diving into the camera apps as well, it's a very different experience in both cases. Here on the LG G7, as I said before, you can swap between standard and wide angle views, depending on what you're trying to shoot, uh, whereas you don't obviously have that option on the OnePlus. Both phones come with a number of toggles. You can add on some filters in the case of the LG G7. Just a quick tap there. Uh, you can also jump into various other camera modes, which you can also do here on the OnePlus, just with a quick pull up, pull up, get there in the end. Both these phones offer a portrait mode. They both also have full pro controls, which you can use. Uh, we actually prefer the G7's pro controls because you've got this little graphy feature here, which just allows you to set a particular scene and then it shows you how the manual controls are altered to suit that scene. So it's quite good if you don't really know much about ISO levels, white balance, all that kind of thing. It shows you the kind of settings you should be using. You also have a nice bit of slow motion uh, video mode on both of these phones as well. And of course you get a nice bit of time lapse here on the OnePlus 2 if that's your bag. But of course the LG G7 naturally wins in the camera tech round because it has a food mode so you can use that to shoot your burgers and stuff. Nice. And of course the LG G7 you do have direct access to that Google lens tech again and you also have LG's rather unusual AI cam. It's basically supposed to be smart scene detection uh, but all it seems to do is just throw these random words on the screen. Uh, bath, salt, basin, office, bath, again uh, yeah just just random stuff and it's, it can be quite distracting to be perfectly honest so uh, not entirely sure if it makes much difference compared with the standard order mode I'm going to be doing a full in-depth testing on that so stay tuned for more that's for that video tech if you jump into the resolution settings here on the LG G7 you can see you shoot full HD at up to 60 frames per second you can also shoot it at the stretched 18 by 9 by 9 aspect ratio uh, in order to suit the elongated screen and you can jump all the way up to 4k as well at 30 frames per second However, when it comes to the video, video resolution, the OnePlus 6 definitely offers some better options. So for instance, you can shoot at 1080p, 30 or 60 frames per second, jump it up to 4K, and you even get a 4K at 60 frames per second mode for some hyper-realistic results. It really is very impressive, and the image stabilization is basically out of this world. It's nuts. And anyway, that, in a very brief nutshell, is the LG G7 versus the OnePlus 6. As you can see, there's quite a lot of difference between these two handsets. They both pack some very unique and very interesting features and some very cool premium hardware as well. So which one would you be more tempted by? Definitely let us know in the comments below. It'd be very interesting to hear your thoughts. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more on the LG G7, the OnePlus 6, and all of the latest and greatest new handsets. Thank you very much, guys. Love you.